Welcome to Fantastic Battles, and today it's going to be robotic warfare as two iconic 80s robots square off. It's Johnny Five versus the T-800. Now, keep in mind that it's called Fantastic Battles for a reason, and before you scoff at this and blindly assume that it would be a cakewalk for the T-800, let's take a look at the facts. There are indeed a number of variables that would contribute to the outcome of this matchup. And first and foremost, it's very important to realize what the hell we're talking about. When it comes to the T-800, we're going to go with a base model fresh off the Cyberdyne Systems factory floor endoskeleton. And no, we're not going to bother with the biosynthetic flesh because that doesn't really matter. The purpose of that was for infiltration only, and it adds nothing to the armor class of the T-800. The T-800's endoskeleton is made out of titanium so flesh isn't going to do a damn thing. Its armor class is already pretty damn high, so why bother? And besides, the addition of flesh would mean the difference between two robots fighting each other and a robot fighting a naked dude. <laughs> Though the T-800 is from the future, and in order for this battle to take place, it would have to come back through time through the time field generator. And since nothing dead will go, as Kyle Reese so eloquently put it, the T-800 would have to be surrounded by its biosynthetic flesh. However, this is fantastic battles, and we can do whatever the hell we want, so we're going to ignore all that. So, it's a base model T-800 endoskeleton. But which Johnny Five is it going to be? As you know, there are two short circuit movies, and in these movies, there are different versions of Johnny Five. And with these different versions, there are, of course, more variables. The biggest one being the Johnny Five featured in the first short circuit movie. In that film, we see that Johnny Five comes standard with a shoulder mounted, highly destructive laser cannon, which no doubt would make short work of the T 800. So, in the interest of fairness, we're not going to go with that version of Johnny Five. Hey, this battle might be fantastic, but it's not going to be unfair. Instead, let's focus on the Johnny Five featured in Short Circuit 2. In that film, we see that Johnny Five takes a more utilitarian and passive approach. And he has replaced his laser cannon with a toolbox filled with handy gadgets. Gadgets that may, in fact, prove useful against the T-800. Well, obviously not all of them. I mean, what's the umbrella gonna do? The point is, Johnny Five would not be completely helpless without his laser cannon. And keep in mind that Johnny Five also has a multifunctional utility arm, which, as we see in Short Circuit 2, includes a laser cutting torch, and that would most certainly come in handy against the T-800. And we also know that Johnny Five comes standard with a radio transmitter slash transceiver, and with this, he is capable of manipulating certain electronics and machinery. And though it is undetermined, he very well may be able to do this against the T-800. It's unclear, but logically, it is a possibility. So all of these things give Johnny Five an advantage with onboard weaponry and tools, whereas the T-800 does not have any of those things whatsoever. It has to obtain weaponry and tools, and is only as functional as its environment will allow it to be. Just like Johnny Five could use any of his tools for this battle, the T-800 could use any weapon it could find, which more than likely would be any kind of firearm, and if that were the case, the T-800 would have a clear advantage with weapon mastery. The T-800 is made for warfare. It is a war machine in every sense of the word, and that being the case, its design mimics the human skeleton. System. And that design gives it two completely dexterous and fully functional five-fingered hands. Which means it can do anything a human can do, and that most certainly includes effectively using firearms. Whereas Johnny Five's design sort of prevents him from doing that. Johnny Five does not have two five-fingered hands, his appendages are more like claws. And though he is capable of using simple handheld tools, using a firearm would be extremely difficult, if not impossible. But the use of simple handheld tools means that he is capable of constructing traps, which would be effective against the T-800 to an extent. And depending on what kind of prep time he would have, Johnny Five could quite possibly Kevin McAllister any environment he was in, giving Johnny Five the advantage of craftiness, which could match the T-800's weapon mastery. And he would more than likely have to employ these sorts of guerrilla tactics in order to effectively combat the T-800. This is mainly due to another great advantage the T-800 has over Johnny Five, and that is 
is higher mobility and dexterity. As I had mentioned, the T-800 has two dexterous and fully functional five-fingered hands, and its overall design is based on the human skeletal system, meaning that it would be just as mobile as any human being would be. In fact, it would be more so given that it is cybernetically enhanced. And the outcome of this matchup really would come down to the two very different designs of these two very different robots. The T-800 is bipedal, and Johnny Five is, well, not. As we know, he rolls on small tank treads and operates on a very heavy base. And though this design does give him a high radius of turning, he does seem to be rather limited and cumbersome in his overall movement. Certain environments could be a hindrance to him, and the T-800 does not have to worry about that. Any kind of close quarter environment would not do Johnny Five any favors. And this, of course, all comes back to the two very different designs and two very different intended purposes. As I had mentioned before, the T-800 was designed purely for warfare and combat. And yes, it's true, Johnny Five was going to be used for military purposes as well, but he was not designed for that. The original intention of the design of Johnny Five was meant to be for civilian purposes. It was only after the fact that the military became interested and wanted to use it for combat, with the retrofitting of the aforementioned laser cannon. But that's really about it, and being specifically designed for warfare and just happening to be used for it are two very different things. And I realize that maybe it's not exactly fair to compare the two robots because, well, the T-800 is from the future and therefore more advanced. But I do think that Johnny Five would be clever enough to match this fact. And speaking of advanced, there is another advantage the T-800 would have over Johnny Five, and that's a greater CPU. Again, this might not be all that fair considering that the T-800 is from the future and of course his technology would be more advanced. Its CPU contains a huge database and is capable of storing massive amounts of information. Anything from how to drive a big rig to, as a T-1000 demonstrates in the second Terminator movie, how to make beef stew. And of course, combat and warfare. And it comes standard with all this information. Johnny Five, however, has to be programmed. But of course, after his, um, how do we say, rare malfunction, he was able to self-program. And he now operates on a neural net processor, making him a learning computer. And he is capable of obtaining massive amounts of information, or input as he calls it, on his own accord. But, like I said, he has to obtain that information on his own. And since the T-800 is from the future, there wouldn't exactly be any information on it. However, the T-800 would more than likely have lots of information on Johnny Five. Since Johnny Five was part of a military commissioned project, there would be files on how he operated. And these files would be included in the Skynet database, which means they would also be included within the T-800's database. Knowledge is power, and if G.I. Joe taught us anything, it's that knowing is half the battle. And the T-800 would have a clear advantage because of this. The T-800 would know a lot about Johnny Five, but Johnny Five would not know a lot about the T-800. But Johnny Five would be able to learn as he goes, and the first thing he would notice about the T-800 is what it's made of. The T-800's endoskeleton is constructed out of something called hyper alloy which doesn't even exist yet. Again, that whole being from the future thing has a lot of advantages. But Johnny Five, the input-absorbing son of a gun he is, would be able to tell that this hyper-alloy is mainly a composite of titanium and coltan, two very durable materials, given the T-800 possibly its greatest attribute with higher armor class. Johnny Five does not have this. In fact, within the course of the two short-circuit movies, we see that Johnny Five is susceptible to gunfire and blunt force trauma. However, in those two movies, we also see that Johnny Five is capable of repairing himself, giving him the attribute of durability in the form of self-repair. The T-800 does not seem to be able to do this. All it does is remove the damaged parts that might be hindering its mission, making it more vulnerable each time this occurs, which is quite different than self-repair. Johnny Five's ability to self-repair goes right along with his willingness to do so, and that's where his greatest attribute fits in, and that is higher constitution. And if you've ever played Dungeons & Dragons, then you know how important this is. It's a drive to survive and to succeed. And whether or not Johnny Five is actually alive is neither here nor there. But he seems to think he is, and really that's all that's important. If he thinks he's alive, then he is. And that gives him a tremendous 
resolve, a human condition, and of course, a higher constitution. The T-800 just simply follows programs and does what it's told to do. And anyone can tell you that being told to do something and wanting to do something are completely different. A higher constitution is one of Johnny Five's greatest advantages, and it's something that the T-800 will never have. So let's take a final look at the attributes of these two combatants. Johnny Five does not have a high armor class, but he does have the ability to self-repair, giving him durability. His higher constitution gives him a tremendous drive to succeed. And of course, it doesn't hurt to have onboard weaponry and tools. And his craftiness is something that he would rely upon more than once. As we've established, being from the future has lots of advantages. And the T-800 enjoys a higher armor class and a greater CPU because of it. Its human-like design means that it has higher mobility and dexterity. And that means it's efficiently able to use firearms, giving it weapon mastery. So given all that, what do you think would happen in this edition of Fantastic, Fantastic Battles? Battles? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and be sure to hit subscribe and keep it locked right here. And I'll see you next time only on Captain Adam's VHS Pirate Ship.